gonna be a great day what's going on grunts welcome back let's talk about a very popular topic and a very unpopular method okay so if uh, this rubs people the wrong way good it means you're thinking and I think we need to do a little bit more of that so this is the modern minute man's uniform quick story so I had the luxury of living in Europe for a long time and did a lot of really cool missions over there in Eastern Europe, you know, spying on people, collecting intel. Well, collecting information. We didn't call it intel. And when we were out in the towns, small villages and like city centers, European cities, uh, we would play a game. You know, we'd be out there drinking our beer during the day because that's what people do. I know Americans lose their minds at that. Um, we used to play a game called Spot the American Guys. Okay, so... There was always other units out there operating. It was usually the counter intel guys, CI dudes running around out there, and even some of the soft guys. Yes, they do stupid things too. And not to rag on anybody, but it's institutional inbreeding and lack of thought and also cultural awareness, okay? So even the soft guys, if they were not stationed in Europe for a while and actually got out into the towns, and I ran into the 10th group guys in Germany all the time. You could see a mile away, yep, there's a freaking operator. You know, a group of 12 dudes running around like Joe. They got their beards, sure, but you know, they got the grunt style shirts on, they got their tactical ball caps on. The Europeans don't wear ball caps. The absolute worst were the counterintelligence dudes. Merrill tactical boots on. They've got their coyote tan freaking tactical cargo pants on. They've got a polo shirt hanging off over their gut, and then they got their tactical hat oakley sunglasses let me just say right off the bat okay i don't think uh any kind of kinetic fight is coming i've said it a few times people want to fight me on that i don't think it's in our near future nothing wrong with being prepared for that nothing wrong with having a plate carrier and helmet and everything you know 40 magazines ready to go that's fine man you know fail to plan you plan to fail but if we're actually going to get into that fantasy Okay, let's try to think about it realistically. All right, you can consider whatever situation you want, but we do have to kind of think about it from a Red Dawn perspective. All right, how many people are willing to leave their families, leave their homesteads, and go out and be a grunt? All right, I know a lot of my haters are saying, absolutely, I do it every day. All right, well, you know, there's a reason we have a police force, because 99.9% .9 of Americans refuse to go back to the old days where communities police themselves, okay? That's why we have organized law enforcement agencies. You know, you can complain about that, but until you're ready to uh, do patrols all day and all night and swap out with the guys in your neighborhood and trust them and actually enforce laws and all that, that's what we got, okay? So most people... I would see is kind of turning into an insurgency. That's where we get the Red Dawn situation. So we're just gonna go down head to toe how I could see at least myself and guys I know going about our day and then it turns into what we saw in Iraq a lot. We didn't really see uniformed fighters um, with combat outposts and actual logistics hubs. They didn't even have a talk, okay? What we typically dealt with was some very trained foreign fighters, but mostly a lot of local guys who ran a shop, you know, did some work, had some car shops, sold cars, whatever, just regular Joes, okay? They always had some kind of plans for ambush to set in. They knew the roads, they knew our tactics, what we did. As soon as we would return fire with, you know, freaking everything we have, the guys would walk away. In most cases, casually. Go behind a building, drop their stuff, any kind of tactical stuff goes somewhere and then they just walk around. They come out from behind the building with a shovel and we can't shoot them anymore. You might met TC something before you step off and then you get out somewhere else down in the village or in the city and everything changes. Now you got to adapt. So with all these factors in mind, all the dreamland stuff covered. So first of all, a lot of the gear I'm carrying is going to be cheap stuff that works that I also don't mind separating with. Because again, we are red dawning and being an insurgency, all right? So, cheap radio that I can reach out and talk to people with. I'm not talking on it all day long so people can triangulate where I am. If there's any kind of sense of danger, I chuck this thing in the woods or in a dumpster, it's gone. It's not on me. But I might not even go out with a radio, all right? 
We're gonna have TTPs in place. We're gonna have an SOP, standard operating procedure, tactics, techniques, and procedures. Something like this, a whistle. We call it a R word whistle. That would be good too for signaling, okay? I'm not gonna be in an area that I shouldn't be in. I'm gonna be in an area that I know and that everybody I work with knows, okay? So we might have certain signals on this to tell people what's going on. You know, Viet Cong and NVA used it against us. It worked very well and you can hear these things all over the place. The non-tactical cool guy glasses, just aviator, cheap freaking Amazon glasses. This is more normal. Now, they're not ballistic, okay? Because if I get picked up by somebody, they're gonna be like, why are you wearing ballistic glasses? You, you, you're pretending to be an average villager, you got ballistic glasses on, no go. They might protect me from facial recognition. And then to help cover our face even more, a non-tactical ball cap, okay? Americans wear ball caps. You can travel Europe. The only ball caps you'll see will be maybe the 15 year old emo kids. And it's gonna be the ridiculous hip hop style oversized freaking bill. All right, but generally, Americans, especially in the adult world, if we're going to wear a ball cap, it's going to be like this. It's a non-tactical hat, you know, it covers my face from above, stuff like that. The glasses help cover me up even more. But also, it's just a cheap freaking Guinness hat I got with, I don't know, whatever I bought that day. So I could part with that. I could easily throw that away if I don't want to be wearing a ball cap. Now for the jacket, this is my actual work jacket. Typical brand, almost all American workers are wearing. Even a lot of the guys who do not work. It's a very comfortable jacket. It's non-tactical. It can perform tactical functions. I can stuff these pockets full of stuff. I got a, what we call a secret pocket down in here. It can serve a tactical purpose, but it is not a tactical jacket. It's a regular cut American workers jacket. It's also large enough to where I can fit plenty of layers under it. No camouflage pattern. No tactical stuff on there. It's just, hey, I'm a freaking worker guy and I like my FR capabilities, flame resistance. Some heat resistance is not a bad idea, especially for dealing with possible melted barrels. Think about it. In the jacket, I got my phone, a regular phone. We might switch to the Nokia, you know, throwaway phones, but I could totally part with this. And so I know the guys living in dreamland, they're gonna say, well, you could be triangulated on a phone. Okay, don't you think that's a little suspicious if you are a modern American, even in a bad situation? You're not carrying a phone. Do you really think things are gonna go that bad that Americans are gonna stop being Americans? Westerners are gonna stop being Westerners? Guys, there's freaking Starlink in Ukraine right now. They're using Starlink in, in the Israel conflicts, okay? There's gonna be internet. Somebody's gonna operate internet. Everybody's families, their kids are still gonna wanna be on Facebook or Tommy book or, you know, Pelosi book, whatever they create at that time. So yeah, if you're doing tactical operations, you probably don't wanna have your smartphone on you. But if I'm a gray man blending in with society, if a dude is harassing me on the street and I do not have a phone, that will throw up some red flags, all right? So when I'm doing my regular stuff, day-to-day -day ops not fighting just being a regular gray man gorilla i'm having my phone because when there's internet there will be internet americans are still gonna have their freaking apps and their phones it's gonna happen if i do get into trouble and i need to ditch this thing i could ditch it before the mission because you don't want to be doing tactical stuff with the phone on you you will be tracked but what's to say i can't duct tape this or throw this in the back of a moving vehicle on purpose so whoever's tracking my phone if they're after me now they're following that all over the freaking place okay so have fun with that guys i'm going this way my phone's going that way i don't know across the country so they'll go track that now because i'm a regular worker dude and we like to eat got some sustenance on me right freaking plain old power bar protein good stuff that doesn't stand out too much and it's also good if i do happen to be on the run for a little bit I've got something to at least keep me alive, okay? If you're not a worker dude and you don't care about FR, something like these flannel jackets are totally fine. I know people gotta know the brand, uh, Dickies. Cheap old freaking Dickies flannel jacket. It's got the uh, old poncho liner, 
smoke jacket material in there nice and warm with a long sleeve shirt you're good to go so i've noticed uh you know like on the west coast pacific northwest and stuff they love their flannels um most northern parts of america you know you got the loggers and outdoorsmen and the hipsters they still love their flannel okay no big deal most of the crowd i'm hanging out with um not too big into the flannel and again if i'm pretending to be a worker in my regular occupation i'm gonna have this kind of jacket on it's what i do but again considerations so now let's go through the layers well i know you guys want to see this so i've got i've got my weapon right there all right it's concealed you know definitely under the jacket but as much as i love psa outstanding weapons the price tag is what you might want to consider and a lot of the fancy guns people are running are way overpriced okay i got it youtube sexiness uh selling views and and marketing and all that crap got it but i'm happy if i have to ditch a 300 dollars weapon uh maybe come back to it later or i may never see it again but if i think I might be looked at and could possibly be stopped. I don't want that on me. Now we could get down into the weeds like, well, you should be able to fight your way out of it. Sure, that's my course of action one, is to fight my way out of it with this so that I could get to the actual weapon should things go down. But again, I'm most likely going to be by myself, blending in with the crowd, or me and a couple other buddies, we might be on a job pretending to do stuff. Maybe we're scouting something out. If uh, a patrol of 10 bad guys with rifles roll up and it's just me and three of my buddies, I don't think we're going to be able to shoot our way out of it with that. Okay. So again, we can live in dreamland or we can start to think realistically. It might be a tactical retreat. I might have to get rid of this thing, throw it in somebody else's car, dump it in the woods, hopefully come back to it later, throw it in a trash can, whatever. That is a high possibility. That's why cheap stuff that is still good quality is a great idea because you could probably buy 10 of these for the price that some people spend in other things. So if I have to ditch this, no big deal, man. I ain't gonna cry about it. The jeans, all right, I'm a worker dude. I've got regular jeans. They are tapered, kind of like the cowboy fit, but they're not like the skinny tight jeans, okay? So again, if you're on the West Coast, I don't know of anybody under 40 that is wearing normal jeans and, and low rise and all this stuff. Okay, fine, you do what you gotta do for your area. The crowd I'm hanging out with in my area, it's either worker guys with somewhat tapered regular blue jeans that have to be worn. They have to have that worn look. So if you don't actually work for a living, well, you know, go crawl around, dirty your jeans up a little bit. It's either guys in worker jeans, stuff like that, or it's gonna be ranchers and, you know, farmers and stuff. But everybody is wearing jeans. Jeans can perform in the woods. So I know all the cool guys, well, cotton kills. Jeans are horrible. Guys, the Navy SEALs survived with them in Vietnam in the jungles, and they specifically wore them in the jungles because their fatigues fell apart. The blue jeans did not fall apart in the jungle. As hot and humid as it is in the jungle, somehow they survived. Okay, so they can do it there. I think you'll be okay. If guys can wear cotton dresses and crush us, I think you could wear some freaking jeans. But you know what it comes down to? Training. Most of my rucks, I wear jeans because I don't like to walk around in freaking tiger stripes and camo and all this stuff. So if I'm rucking and I'm crossing through neighborhoods and stuff, I'm doing it in jeans. You get used to it, man. What about the cold? Well, let's talk about the cold. We are not out in the wood line doing wedge formations and patrol bases, especially knowing our budget and our capabilities. If you think you're gonna take your group out into the woods when shit's really going down, you're probably going to be found if it's not somebody's phone running you know they got drones surveillance all this other stuff uh your neighbors reporting you oh yeah i saw uh five guys go out there with a whole bunch of gear on i don't know what they're doing but they look like they're going to war boom you're done i think this fantasy of running around through the woods and everything it's you know don't get me wrong it's not bad to think about patrols and stuff but i really think most people are going to do the comfortable american thing and stick close to town okay so i'm not worried about cold weather survival i'm worried about being warm enough to do whatever my job is day to day and if i find myself evading through the woods this is how i see wilderness survival that's another dreamland you see on youtube wilderness survival if i'm not hurt like seriously hurt if i walked my way into the situation i can easily walk my way out okay 
a little bit of land nav skills, a little bit of fitness, a little bit of brains. You know, I found myself in predicaments in the woods, sure, but guess what I did? I just walked my ass out of it. I have to be mostly incapacitated to be stuck in the woods to where I need all the survival gear and 10 C's and all that crap. I'm going to stick around the town, I'm gonna to stick around my homestead, and I'm gonna look like an average dude. And if I get caught out in the woods in a blizzard and this is not sufficient, I'm not gonna build a fire and set up mud huts and shit. I'm gonna walk my happy ass back to the nearest town and guess what? Because I'm not dressed like Rambo, I can walk into that town and be like, hey man, my truck broke down, I need some help. And they look me up and down. Oh, you seem like a normal dude. Yeah, sure. Come into a town looking like Rambo because you went out like a tactical bushcrafter and you still got driven out of the woods. Well, you might be walking into unfriendly territory. Sympathizers, people who want to be left alone and they don't want you and your fighters in their town. Again, guys, gray man and it's all situation dependent. So in the jeans, yeah, we got the truck keys. We got some, you know, other stuff, some chapstick. Chapstick is really good, petroleum jelly. And then I've got my worker gloves. Now these are military ones, but they're not like desert camo. They're not super military looking. They are FR. Why FR? Not because I'm setting myself on fire in the woods because I can't make a fire, but in case it does come down to it and I'm handling hot weapons, okay? If you've ever picked up an M16 or M4 or your AR when it's 110 degrees outside and your weapon's been outside all day, you know what I'm talking about. It sucks, okay? I've worn this on the job site forever and nobody has ever mentioned it. Hey, what kind of gloves are those? Are those military? Nobody cares. They look like they're work gloves. They're just warm enough to protect me in these elements and they're leather palms and the cloth is FR, okay? So I can grab super hot stuff, no problem. Probably not picking up a 50 cal barrel with it because you need the special mittens for that. But hey, I could take my jacket off with the gloves and the jacket. Boom, there we go. We're not catching on fire or melting ourselves. Now the clothes, a little bit of a product push. So this is the Armadillo Company. Coolest cold weather design I've seen in a long time. It's a wool and stretchy spandex material, mostly wool, with, instead of the moisture wicking stuff on your skin, we've got netting. The netting gives that space between the clothing and your skin to actually let that sweat come off of your body, turn into vapor, and go away. Awesome design. If you guys don't know Armadillo, go check them out. It's pricey because it's high quality stuff, but it is well worth the price. So the first one they sent me was a, a tactical brown, right? Tactical. They actually make regular colors like black. Guys, black is a standard color all over the world. It's not a big deal. Again, unless you're down on the Gulf Coast, you know, black is kind of like for funerals. Everybody else is in Mardi Gras colors. So Armadillo, I want to see a Mardi Gras pattern uh, freaking shirt. <laughs> I'll, I'll totally push those for you guys. This other undershirt, it's a normal Joe color. It's not tactical, it doesn't stand out. It keeps me nice and warm, it's comfortable. And it's something everybody would wear. While we're looking at this stuff, I don't have a tactical watch. I've got a standard cheap old American watch, all right? I don't need to have grids and maps and all this stuff. I know my area. I'm not screwing around where I need to have grids constantly. A tactical watch gives you away every time. It either makes people think you're a dummy that buys products for no reason and you don't know what you're doing, or you're a serious dude who really knows what you're doing. You don't want to fall into either one of those categories. And also it looks decent enough to where I fit in as like an American worker. Hey, I work hard for my paycheck. I don't make a lot of money. I wear my workman's jacket everywhere I go, you know, cause that's all I got. But I want to try to blend in with high society and have a timepiece. But it's also cheap enough to wear, if I think I might get in trouble, or the watch could give me away cause nobody else around me wears a watch. I could take it off and ditch it. And I ain't crying about it. Then, boots. Work, workmen wear boots, all right? I'm not a backpacker. I'm um, not being tactical and stuff, but worker guys wear boots. I wear these on the job site all the time, okay? Yes, they are military jungle boots. They are black, and they've got a heel on them, yes. But you will see stuff like this and the rancher, farmer, you know, other tradesman jobs. You'll see boots like this all the time. They are black, not the tactical tan coyote brown. So they don't scream OIF veteran. I need boots to protect my feet because I'm working. And I like black leather because every man should be able to polish his shoes and look good. So 
I don't think that's a big deal. If I'm not wearing my boots, I'm rocking Converse Chucks, okay? That is American as hell. People talk about minimalist shoes and boots and all this and, and all this crap. Guys, Converse Chucks are the original minimalist shoes. You can still get them for $40, $30 sometimes on sale, and they're great. You learn how to run in them, you blend in, nobody thinks anything. You could be a younger, ironic hipster, or you could just be a 35 to 40 year old dude who likes to wear chucks. You might want to wear New Balance white with white socks. <laughs> if you fit in that way, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I think for me, I would definitely stand out. There's usually a certain body type that wears that stuff, and it's not me. I'm not making fun, I'm just I'm just thinking about it, right? Thinking about it realistically. I've got footwear that I can hit the woods if I need to. I could stomp somebody's head in if I have to, but also it fits in with the, hey, I'm just a freaking worker, man. I'm outdoors a lot, I'm, I'm climbing ladders, I'm, you know, working around concrete and steel. I need boots to protect my feet. If I'm going into uh, Hipsterville, I might switch everything, put the flannel on and the chucks and I blend right in with the rest of the hipsters. All right, I think this has gone on long enough, but let's just summarize the principles. Okay, if we're gonna go gray man, you need to actually look around at what people are doing. You gotta blend in as well as you possibly can, and you've gotta look around. What are other people doing? What career do most people have? Or people who don't work, what are they doing? What, what are their habits during the day? Okay, you know, chances are their habits aren't wearing tactical gear conducting OPs in the wood line outside the village. That's not what Americans do. Even when things go down, the 1% the chance things go down, that's not what the average American's gonna do. The average American, no matter what, is still going to want to sit on the couch, turn the TV on, and watch their football. It's, you know, the guys who are awake, they understand how ridiculous that is, but most people aren't. And even in a catastrophe, they're just gonna wanna be left alone and we're gonna hang out, watch a TV, or go into the bars. We got some shooters, enjoying the woods, good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, I hope you made you think, and again, if I hurt your feelings, it's not on purpose, it just means that you're actually being forced to think. So, good stuff, I'll see you in the next one, out.